obstacle and different tile types. Today we're gonna add volumes in our environment and we're gonna use them to identify the different tile types. That way, during the scan of the environment, if our land traces touch these volume, we'll know which type of tiles we're adding to our grid. So let's get to it. In Unreal, I'm gonna start by going in my grid folder and create a new folder, which I'm gonna name utilities and open it. And inside it, I'm going to create a new enum. So blueprint enum, which I'm gonna name E underscore tile type and open it. This enum is going to contain all the type of tiles we're going to support in the future, but for now we're gonna start with three. The first one is gonna be none for all the places in our grid that there's no ground, and then there's the normal tiles, so normal, which are gonna be most of the tiles of our grid. And finally, for today, we want to support the obstacles, so obstacle. Here we go. Now we can save the enum and close it. Then I'm gonna go back in the grids folder and create my new blueprint for my volumes. So I'm going to right click, blueprint class, type actor, which I'm gonna name bp underscore grid modifier. And open it. Here I'm gonna need a static mesh component, so add new component, static mesh. And then just so we see something, I'm gonna set the static mesh on the right, I'm gonna search for square and take my sm grid square, which is the cube. And finally, we're gonna give it a material. It's not gonna matter in game because we're not gonna see the cube in game, but we want to see it in editor. So I'm just gonna search for flat field and use M grid flat field that we created in a previous video. Perfect, that's enough for now. I'm just gonna compile and go in the construction script. And here we're actually going to update the mesh based on the shape we want to use. So I'm going to drag the static mesh in there and do a set mesh, set static mesh. Then I can connect it after my construction script. And we're gonna use the data table that we created for our grid shapes to set the static mesh. But all that code is inside the grid right now. And this volume right here doesn't know that the grid exists. And actually maybe it's possible that there's no grid in the level, so we can't use that. Instead, I'm just going to move all that code inside the function library that this blueprint can also access. So I'm gonna compile it for now and then go back in entry. And I'm gonna go in BP grid just to find my function that I want to use. So in utilities here, I have my get current grid shape data. So this is the function I want to recreate in the function library. Function library, that doesn't exist. So we're going to go create it. I'm going to go back in entry, go in my grid shape folder and create a new function library here. So right click, blueprint, blueprint function library. Then I can name it BFL underscore shape grid shape and open it. Then I can name the function get shape data. And I can go back in my grid, copy all those nodes right here and paste them in the function, like so. I can connect them, like so. I'm gonna drag the enum right here onto the function input and I'm gonna name it the shape. I can delete the old node because we don't need it. And then we're gonna return at the end of the function, return, which we wanna return the row so we can pass it the row like so and name it data instead. And the last thing I have to do is make it pure. So I'm just gonna check the checkbox on the right, then we can compile and save this blueprint function library. Then if I go back in my grid, I can simply call it right here. So get shape data. I can pass it the grid shape, delete all those nodes because we don't need them anymore and connect the data to the return value like so. And that's it for the grid. So I'm just gonna compile and save it. And now we can go back in the grid modifier and call that function. So get shape data, which we can then split and use the data mesh to set the new mesh. And for the shape, I'm just going to right click on it, promote to variable, which I'm gonna name shape. I'm going to make it instance editable by opening the little high right here. And I'm gonna change the default value from none to square. So just so we see something. And now if I go back in the viewport, I should see the square. And if I change my value in the variable, I can see it switching from the square to the hexagon and then to the triangle. And then go back to the square. Perfect, let's go back in the construction script. Next thing, we might wanna change the color of our mesh. So I'm just gonna drag from the mesh and do a set vector parameter value on materials, like so. I'm just going to attach it like that. And the parameter name is gonna be color. And then for the parameter value, I'm going to convert it to a color. So to vector color, to vector linear color, like so. And then I'm going to drag from the color and search for a select node, just the select, not the select color. Then for the index, I'm going to use the type of the tile, which we don't have access right now. So I'm just going to add a new variable, which I'm going to name type. And for the variable type, I'm going to change it from a Boolean to a tile 
type e tile type okay then we can compile drag it into the graph get type connect it to the index we can also make the type instance editable by checking the little eye icon and now we have three colors to work with for the non color i'm going to leave it black the normal color i'm going to make it white let's say and finally for the obstacle i'm going to make it red so a tint of red like so perfect let's compile save and if we go in the viewport by default it's none, so it's black, but if I switch it to normal or obstacle, I can see that the color changes. Perfect. By default, I'm just going to leave it to obstacles. I can go back in the construction script. And there's two last thing I want to change. So I'm going to copy the static mesh one last time right here. And I'm going to do a set collision response to channel this one right here. I can connect it after that. And the reason why I'm doing it in the code instead of doing it directly on the static mesh component in the collision preset right here, it's because every time we set the static mesh on the static mesh component, it overrides all the collision settings. So that's why after setting the static mesh, we have to set the collision settings again. So for the channel, I'm going to select the ground channel, which is actually going to be used for the ground and for the grid modifier. So I'm just going to rename the channel so it's more clear for us. So I'm gonna go in entry, Edit project settings. I'm gonna go in collisions. Double click on my ground channel to rename it. And I'm gonna name it ground and grid modifiers. Then I can add set. And go back in the grid modifiers. Make sure that we're using the ground and grid modifiers channel for the channel. And the new response is gonna be overlap. And finally, because we don't wanna see this cube visible in game, I'm just going to do a set actor hidden in game. Connect it like so and check the checkbox. Perfect. Compile, save, and we're done with this blueprint. And to use this blueprint, we're gonna go place it in the level. So I'm gonna go back in entry, double click on my square level because we're gonna start with this one. And then I'm gonna go in my grid folder, grab my blueprint and drop it into the world. Then I'm going to use it to envelope all my obstacles in my level. So I'm just gonna place it right here. Then I'm going to move it up a little bit. I'm going to change the scale to, let's say, 4 by 2 so it fits with my grid. And for the height, I'm going to make it 2. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the other bush right here. So I'm going to duplicate this one, move it over here. And then I can change the scale to 2 so it fits with the bush. And I'm going to do the same thing for all the other obstacles in my level. So I'm going to see you in 30 seconds. Perfect, this is how it looks. I'm done with all my three levels. So I just went through all my obstacles and enveloped them with the shapes. And I'm gonna show you the other one. So I have the hexagon right here. So I went through all the obstacles and added the hexagon around them. Uh, oops, this one is a little bit off. I'm just gonna move it a little bit back in. Okay, perfect. And I have my triangle. So I'm just gonna add the hexagon in, show the triangle. And as you can see, it's all done, but it's not 100% perfect. Right here, I have a few obstacles that are still picking out a little bit. I'm just gonna fix them in between videos, but for now, that's good enough. But there's actually one thing that I don't really like, and it's all the white dots right there. So I have one right here, right there, right there, right there, another one, another one, another one. There's a lot of them. And this is because we are still using the default route for our actor. So we're just gonna replace them. But before we can do that, just make sure to save all to save all your levels. So I'm just gonna save selected and save all my levels because since there's a little bug in Unreal, we're gonna need to close Unreal and reopen it after we change the default route. So now that everything is saved and I made sure that everything is saved properly, I'm just going to go in the grid modifier, go in the viewport, and here I'm going to replace the default route by a real route. So I'm just going to add a new component, a scene component. I'm gonna drag it on top of the default scene route to replace it. Then I can compile and save the blueprint. If I go back in the level right now, you can see that everything's broken. All my shapes are now super small. They have the right location, looks like, but they don't have the right scale and it's really weird. But this is just a problem that's happening in the levels. If you select your actors, you can see that the scales is completely resetted on the right. So we can simply fix that by closing Unreal without saving any level, so don't save anything. And then once Unreal is reopened, we can see that all the shapes are back to normal and they don't have the white dot on the top of them. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. And it's the case for all the levels. Awesome. Okay, so the last thing we have to do in this video is to make sure to use those volumes when we are tracing for the ground of our environment. So let's go do that. I'm gonna go in my BP grid. And here I'm going to go in my spawn grid function and I'm gonna go find where I'm tracing for the ground, right here. 
Right now the function is only telling us if it hit something or not, but it will be nice to have more information. And by that I mean the type of ground that it just hit. So let's change that variable right here. I'm gonna change it from a boolean to a tile type. So tile type, e tile type, and I'm going to rename it to tile type. And now if I compile, nothing works anymore. But that's all right, we're gonna fix that later. I'm gonna go in my trace for ground function. Then I'm gonna go at the end of the function. And for this return right here, it's returning none when it's not hitting anything. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. I'm just gonna leave it that way. But for this part right here, I'm going to give myself a bit more space, like so. And right here, instead of getting only the first item of our list that was returned by the sphere trace, we're gonna loop through all of them. So I'm just going to drag and search for for each loop, which I'm gonna connect to replace the get, like so. And actually, we're not gonna return right here, we're gonna return at the end of the loop, so I'm just gonna cut those two nodes and paste them after my loop, like so. And in the loop, we want to know if we touch a volume, so to do that, I'm just gonna expand the break result, I'm gonna get the hit actor, and I'm going to cast it, so cast to grid modifier, like so. I can collapse it again, because it's too big, and connect it to my loop. And if the hit actor right here is a grid modifier, we want to get the tile type. So I'm just gonna drag from it and get the type, uh, get type, which I'm gonna save into a variable. So right click, promote to local variable, which I'm gonna name uh, ret type, and then connect it like so. And then we can use that variable to return at the end of the function. So ret type connected to the tile type. But let's just make sure that the default tile type before doing the for each loop is a normal tile because we just hit something, so we want it to be normal type by default, so normal right here, and then we can connect it to the for each loop. And I'm gonna connect it after my if right here. So we hit something, we set it to normal, we loop through everything that we just hit. If it was a grid modifier, we set the type based on the type of the grid modifier, perfect. And the last thing we have to do is the Z of our location. So I'm just going to promote this into a local variable which I'm gonna name ret z, connect it to the cast fail because we're gonna assume that everything else is the ground and then we can use the ret z at the end of the function right here when we are returning, perfect. Let's compile, save, okay, now we still have the error to fix. Let's go back in the other function right here. And for the if right there, we're just gonna check if the tile type is walkable. So if any unit could walk on that tile type, we're gonna spawn a tile, otherwise we're not. So I'm just gonna make myself a little bit more space and we're gonna create a function right here. So create a new function on the left, is tile type walkable. As input, I'm gonna take a tile type, so e tile type, which I'm gonna name type. And the output's gonna be a boolean, which I'm gonna name is walkable. And to check if it's walkable, we're gonna use an array because it's the fastest way to do it. So I'm just gonna drag from the tile type, I'm gonna search for contains, I'm gonna take the contains item in the array, the first one, then I'm gonna drag out of the array and search for make array. Right here, I'm gonna add a second pin for the obstacles, so I have the none and the obstacles, the two tile types that are not walkable right now. And then if it contains one of them, it's because the tile is not walkable, so we're just gonna revert that, so not. Like so, then connect it to the is walkable. That way, if the tile type is an obstacle, it means that this array right here contains it because it has obstacle, meaning that this is true, we are inverting it to make it false, and then the tile type is not walkable. And then returning false, which means that obstacle is not walkable. Same thing for none, but in the case that this is a normal tile type, it doesn't contain in the array, so this is false, this is turning it back to true, meaning that this is walkable. Okay, I hope it made sense. Anyway, let's just make that function pure right here in the top right corner, compile, Go back where the error is, take the function, drop it in, connect it to the tile type, and then connect it to the if. And finally we can compile, save, and just go try and see if it worked. Uh, let's go back in the level and press play. I have my grid, it's not based on the environment, I'm just gonna check the checkbox. Okay, I don't know if you saw it, but my bushes here don't have any tiles around them. Perfect. And then like, let's say if I toggle between them, it's gonna be a little bit more visible that my bushes don't have any tile, and actually I'm gonna make my grid a little bit bigger, and we can probably see it better, yeah, right here, on, around those walls. So I have my grid, or not, grid or not, and we can see that there's no tiles around the walls, because they are not considered as walkable tiles. Perfect! So I guess that concludes today's video, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye bye!